Jackie's next port of call is the Horse Racing Museum. As a bones specialist and a horse lover, she can't resist the opportunity to learn more about racehorse skeletons while here in Newmarket. And this is the skeleton of one of the greatest thoroughbreds that ever lived. Isn't this a wonderful skeleton? It's beautifully formed. No, it's fantastic, isn't it? It's, it's Hyperion, who's a 1933 Derby winner, but he's also an incredibly important sire horse because he sired a number of very important winners um, after his racing career himself mm. finished. But what we were hoping is that what you might be able to tell us from the bones. Oh, right. well, the first thing to do is always check that you've got what you <laughs> think you should have. That and it is a horse. Well, right? that it is a male <laughs> horse because it's got, K, it's got a can, canine teeth, which are much smaller in females, are absent altogether, I believe. But of course, one of the ways you can tell you have a racehorse is really because really they have these really quite chiselled faces, comparatively speaking. So, you know, he's got quite a, a sharp angle to his jaw that's quite narrow. And, and this, this area here, which is, you'll be pleased to know, is called zygomatic arch, but basically it's a bit beyond the eyes, yeah. um, is really quite narrow as well. So you've got this fine chiselled yeah. face. But even though he's small, he's obviously been a very powerful yeah. creature. If you look at the muscle attachments on his back legs, particularly here, they're really big. And he's also got strong muscle attachments on his forelimbs, on his, on his radii, which are here. And unlike often with humans who have very powerful muscle attachments, they are equal on both sides. So he's obviously very well balanced. Yes, it's that sort of compact body shape. Mm. And people often remark on how small he is relatively to what they imagine a big racehorse would be. Yeah. But it's all about lean agility at this stage. Yeah. So maybe small, but perfectly formed. Absolutely. The skeleton shows us just how distinctive the physical attributes of a racehorse are. The question is, have we found anything in the trenches to show an equally distinctive racing stables? Hi. Well, we seem to have a somewhat meagre but hopefully informative collection of finds here. It's only meagre down his end. I don't know. <laughs> Size and everything. <laughs> Um, well, pottery front is a bit meagre. Um, we've got one piece of pottery, which is this. This is probably late 16th into 17th mm. century, and it's probably a drinking cup, but that's the only bit of pot we've got that's oh, round about that okay. date. Isn't that weird? Because I can match that with one single metal find from the 17th century. It's a button, but it's quite a big, quite nice yeah. button. Yeah. I mean, this is all domestic waste. There's nothing here I could say came from a horse stable mm. with any confidence. It's the problem of distinguishing when you do have finds of whether they were used on buildings or whether they were used on horses. It's, yeah. You'd think you'd be able to tell the two. Now, that looks ever so much like a hoof pick, mm. particularly when you're thinking about how nicely it fits in the hand. But then when you hold it like that, it also does look ever so much like a door catch yep. or a gate catch. And, of course, you need loads of those in stables. Uh -huh. In fact, you need them anywhere. And it's the same with, with these things. Because at first, when these were found, somebody said, oh, that looks like a thing that's known as a manger bob or a hitching weight, that you, you tie it to a, to a rope that then goes up through a ring and to the horse's head collar. So when it's in a loose box, it can move around. It's got almost like a stretchy rope, because this comes up and down, holding the loop taut, the yeah. rope taut, so that it doesn't get tangled. I don't know what you think of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's very heavy. I think the poor old horse would have a trouble moving his head anywhere with that. No, I think, I think you're right, and, and I think Actually, the true answer is probably, again, they're connected with doors or gates, they're for automatically closing them. Yeah. You can open them, you let them go, this fall pulls down on a chain or a rope and it shuts it. So, so again, not necessarily horses, buildings. And having said it was quite clean, why have we got a dead rat on the table? <laughs> well, it's a stable, isn't it? It's a miracle, there's only one. <laughs>